you're watching the Venom vlog. Hey, when are you gonna make a Spidey vlog? Hey everyone, welcome back to Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. So good to be back. Uh, and tonight I just figured, I got home from work, I have to be back at work in a few hours, and uh, I just probably not going to sleep that much, so I figured I'd go ahead and just record this, and I'll edit it tomorrow when I get home from work, and try to get it up as soon as possible for you guys. Uh, so that way you have a Venom Vlog before Monday, because I want to kind of catch up on at least some of this comic book stuff before we dive into what we're going to do this week leading up to CinemaCon. Uh, so today what we're going to talk about, we're going to skip over the rest of the 90s stuff. Venom the Hunger, uh, Venom License to Kill, uh, Venom uh, Tooth and Claw, uh, the, you know, Venom the Finale, Venom Agenda, Seed of Darkness. We're going to skip over a lot of those and we're going to save them for when they get reprinted later this fall, closer to the when, the when the movie comes out. So we'll use that opportunity to talk about those stories then to help promote those books and maybe get some sales on those books up there for those of you who want to collect all this Venom stuff. You know, now that I know we're going to have all the 90s stuff collected in like a series of like eight or nine trade paperbacks, it's pretty awesome. So uh, we'll wait for those. We'll skip over. Not many monumental moments happen in these. Maybe a little bit in Seed of Darkness, Venom Agenda, and the finale. But all you really need to know is at the end of the 90s uh, series, that all the Venom miniseries that were coming out, in the one called Finale, that kind of wraps up the whole story. And once again, Venom and Eddie Brock get separated uh, at the end, I believe. And uh, and I think Eddie Brock actually loses some of his memory and doesn't remember that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Uh, and then the suit is just kind of like out there in the wild. And we kind of don't know what happened to it. So today what we're going to talk about is Venom Returns. So keep in mind, like I said, we skipped over a bunch of stories that we'll get to and we'll review when they're reprinted. Uh, these stories here are reprinted in two trade paperbacks. The first four issues are printed in a book called Spider-Man The Next Chapter Volume 2. That's currently in print, I believe, but you can also buy it on Comixology and Kindle as well if you want the digital copies. And then there's going to be one issue that we're going to talk about that is in Volume 3 of Spider-Man The Next Chapter. Uh, so real, And this is kind of going to have some Carnage stuff in it, so it's a little bit of Venom. Or it's mostly Venom and a little bit of Carnage in here as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about that. And if you want the Carnage stories that are in this, they are also reprinted in Carnage Classics. They were stories that we did not cover in Carnage Classics, but they are in that book. Uh, like I said, Carnage Classics has a lot of Carnage stuff in it. So make sure you pick that up if you're a Carnage fan. And I think the Carnage Omnibus is coming out soon as well. And that'll have a reprinting of a bunch of Carnage books. So keep an eye out for that at your local comic book store. Uh, and on Amazon if you uh, don't have a local comic store. So let's start with Venom Returns or Venom is Back. Uh, it's in Peter Parker Spider-Man. I think issue 9 and 10 was the first two-part story. And it's like I said, the return of Eddie Brock and Venom. And what happens is, you know, after finale, they kind of went away for a while. Howard Mackey came on the book. Uh, John Byrne, I think, came in for a while to do a book called Spider-Man Chapter 1 and tried to retell the origin of Spider-Man uh, for a new generation. Didn't really go so well. A lot of people didn't really like it. I certainly did not like it. Uh, but I do like John Byrne. I have a lot of respect for that guy and what he's done for comics. So I stuck with it as, you know, as any fan would. I kind of stuck with it. And then he took over the two Spider-Man books after the Clone Saga and everything was just all over the place and a big mess. Marvel decided to simplify and just release two Spider-Man books every month. Amazing Spider-Man and Peter Parker Spider-Man, and they renumbered them back to number one, as Marvel likes to do, and has liked to do for a long time. Um, so in these stories, uh, John Byrne had left the book after the first like six or so issues of each title, and then Howard Mackey took over for some of the writing on one of them, uh, which is Peter Parker Spider-Man, and John Romita Jr. came over to do the art, and I love John Romita Jr., and I liked him on Spider-Man. I liked him on Daredevil a lot, too, but I really liked him on Spider-Man here during this run. Uh, and Venom, the way he comes back is it starts off, and Peter Parker is, you know, dealing with a lot in his life. Mary Jane has a stalker that's freaking her out. She's coming and going. She's, like, leaving, you know, going uh, on different assignments, modeling assignments, acting assignments, and then coming home and trying to be, like, incognito, you know, kind of living that style you know that kind of lifestyle a uh, little upset still that peter's spider-man and then now she has like this crazy stalker that's coming after her so throughout these books that's kind of like a b or a c story is that she's being terrorized finally ending up with her being kidnapped and then you know into the next book spider-man next chapter and then into the books after that they deal with that whole storyline so you know if you want to know what happens there definitely pick up spider-man the next chapter and the subsequent books that come out after it uh, but for this one uh peter you know trying to deal with everything, trying to reconnect with Mary Jane. They're having some issues, uh, and they're, you know, he's just trying to, you know, work things out with her. 
and Venom comes back into his life, but it starts off with the symbiote. The symbiote is going around attaching to random people, and it's looking, you know, it's like, oh, I, I don't like this host, and it kind of spits them out and discards them, and it's looking for either Peter Parker or Eddie Brock. It wants to reconnect with one of its first loves, essentially. And so it finds Peter, tries to bond with him. He's not having it. He fights it while also trying to make sure Aunt May doesn't know what's going on, and then jumps out the window to go after the symbiote as it leaves, and the symbiote finds its way to Eddie Brock and rebonds with Eddie Brock. So that's kind of how Venom comes back in this storyline. And, uh, and it's pretty quick. And then once it you know reunites with Venom, like that, uh, Eddie Brock jumps off. He's like, he doesn't want anything to do with the suit. He's like, no, now that I've been away from it, I, I, I don't want it. I don't want it whispering in my head. And, you know, my life is already tough enough. Like I have a landlord that's like on me all the time for rent. And I just want, I just want to go back to a normal life and try to get back on my feet. And the symbiote, you know, is if I can't have that right now, it's an addiction. I don't want it anymore. And then as soon as he like jumps off a bridge to get away from it, the symbiote goes in after him. Spider-Man waits for hours, can't find them, never sees them come to shore. So he's like, all right, they're out there somewhere. I'll have to find them another day. I'm going to go home and try to deal with this Mary Jane thing. And when he leaves, that's when uh, Venom emerges from the water all together again and happy that they're reunited. So it looks like Eddie just, you know, needed a little taste <laughs> to come back, I guess. Uh, so that's kind of what happens. Then Eddie Brock starts targeting people that he has makes a list. It's kind of a comedic list, a little bit kind of dark humor on the list. It says kill my landlord and you see it crossed off. Uh, so he already somewhere off panel went and killed his landlord uh, for bugging him for rent all the time. Uh, then it said like kill Spider-Man. That's not crossed off. Then it says like, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, terrorize the daily bugle and then kill Spider-Man and kill Spider-Man's listed on there like four times. <laughs> it's a, it's a list with seven things on it and kill Spider-Man is on it four times. So it's pretty funny. So, uh, Eddie is, you know, goes out there, goes to the Daily Bugle, tries to terrorize J. Jonah Jameson for what happened in Venom Agenda, which again, we'll talk about later on. Uh, but obviously, uh, with, you know, that paper ruining uh, his life and getting the truth out there about the Sin Eater, he's always had a grudge against J. Jonah Jameson and, uh, and Spider-Man. So uh, he goes back there, terrorizes the people of the Daily Bugle, Spider-Man fights him off, and then again, Venom gets away. And that's kind of how the story goes. He pops up every couple issues. In one issue, he shows up to literally eat the Carnage symbiote. Uh, Carnage or uh, Cletus Cassidy is sitting in his jail cell and Eddie Brock comes up disguised as the janitor and he's like, hey buddy. And then he looks up, he goes, Eddie, get me out of here. Like, I know we've had our differences, but come on, let's go terrorize the town together. And Eddie's like, no, nah, I'm here for something else. And so Eddie kills all the guards in like a blink of an eye and then opens the gate, like, you know, the, the energy gate, turns it off, powers it down, and then goes in, grabs the, the symbiote, rips it out of Cletus Cassidy, which you know it's attached to his blood. So a very painful process pulls it out of him and eats it and then goes off and becomes super venom for a while. And so he has the Cletus, you know, Cassidy symbiote in him. And again, that's on his checklist. So he crosses that off, eat the symbiote again, or, or get my symbiote back from carnage. So I don't know what he thought that was going to do, but basically every time he fought Spider-Man, it would kind of give him indigestion. And he's like, okay, fine. I can't fight you right now. The, the suits are battling inside of me. I got to go and, you know, get rid of it or something, or find a way to, you know, ingest it properly so you live today spider-man and i'll come back another time so he could have killed spider-man a couple times and he ends up not doing it because of the suit you know the two suits interacting in him uh so that was kind of a neat thing they did and then they brought in the sinister six in the storyline where senator ward he was like the guy like a bc character that was in the spider-man books at this time and also arthur stacy gwen stacy's uh uncle uh because obviously gwen stacy had a father who worked for the police force he died gwen stacy died and there is another stacy named arthur stacy and he comes to new york and he's trying to wrap up some loose ends from his personal life as well uh, and try to and he also befriends spider-man in a roundabout way uh, so he is trying to kill the senator senator ward because he knew the senator once upon a time and apparently the senator has a secret so the sinister six is being hired to go after them but uh, dr octopus doesn't want them to get their hands on senator ward so he goes rogue away from the sinister six so now with an opening uh you know there's a little bit of a fight for who's in charge mysterio is trying to make his way to be the leader but sandman is currently taking control of the group and while he's doing that uh they decide to recruit venom for the sixth member of the sinister six to help them go after spider-man and to get Doc Ock, they want to kill him and kill Senator Ward. Uh, and so that big battle happens and Senator Ward's secret's revealed. He turns out to be some kind of superpowered being. He's shooting energy you know, rays everywhere. Uh, Arthur Stacy gets saved by Spider-Man and Doc Ock gets knocked away. And the Sinister Six get hurt and injured badly and they retreat. And then, of course, Venom slinks away into the shadows, ready to come back another day. So that story kind of, um, you know, blossoms a little bit. And it will involve Venom. And we'll talk about that in our next episode where we talk about the death of Anne Wayne and some of the aftermath from it. 
a lot of that's from Spider-Man Chapter Three, uh, or ch chapter, you know, the next chapter, Volume Three, and a book called uh, Spider-Man: Return of the Green Goblin. So those two trades we'll talk about in our next comic book episode. So you know what happens w when it comes to the death of Anne Wang. We'll talk about that story and some of the aftermath to it, uh, because I don't feel like some of that was you know particularly well written. So I feel like it's something interesting to talk about that maybe I can get your guys' opinion on. You can tell me what you think of it. Uh, but in this one, then it concludes with uh, you know Sandman having betrayed uh, Venom because he he figured oh venom will probably betray us at some point so sandman decides to turn on venom knocks him out uh, during the fight when the senator is going crazy but then that causes sandman and all the other bad guys to get hit instead so venom gets away unscathed and the other sinister six members kind of barely slink away uh, and then venom goes on a hunting trip looking for sandman a couple issues later and this is crossing over between peter parker spider-man and um uh, amazing spider-man and i hopefully i have the covers popping up as i'm talking about each issue on the screen here um and then in the final issue it's you know like i said venom looking for sandman they get into a big tussle uh sandman leads uh venom to the daily bugle turns off all the lights in the building and then that causes spider-man to show up and then sandman says look i knew i couldn't take venom on by myself so i you know did this because i knew it would get your attention you always come to save the daily bugle and it got you here, so now the two of us can take down Venom. So the two of them decide to team up, and Spider-Man grabs some newspapers nearby, lights them on fire, and uses that to, like, you know, get Venom away from everybody. So then Venom, once again, jumps out a window and slinks away uh, from, you know, from killing Spider-Man. And at this point, I think he's already struggled to digesting the, vet, the Carnage symbiote, so he's trying to find ways to get rid of it. And then also Carnage is running around without a symbiote, and you can read what happens about, you know, to him in Carnage Classics, where he paints himself red uh, and tries to run out there just as a naked guy and tries to kill people, uh, thinking he's still kind of Carnage or being really crazy. And it's pretty wacky stuff, but, uh, but it was interesting too, because it was something different with the character. I mean, after he became Silver Surfer, you know, like what, what else can you do with him for a while? So they took the symbiote away and made him like a crazy naked guy. And then he ended up going into the um, negative zone at one point uh, to, uh, you know, battle like Blastar and Spider-Man in, in another dimension. Uh, so all that again collected in Carnage Classics. So in this one, this was just kind of like after finale, uh, Howard Mackey wanted to bring Venom back into the fold, make him really lethal, very deadly, but then all these other stories seemed to take over, and I don't know if that was Howard Mackey's intention or not, because he tried to put some emotional stuff in there, especially with the death of Man Wang. He tried to, you know, execute some arcs with Venom, but nothing really pans out, and nothing feels very fluid in these issues. They, they do feel like random issues of a book, and they just feel like they're kind of wedged in to get, you know, story in there, like filler story. And it's like Venom just kind of pops up every like three or four issues to do something and then he goes away again. So it uh, wasn't really, didn't have the impact I don't think Howard Mackey meant, but that's only on me. Maybe you guys feel differently. So if you've read these issues, you know, and you saw the pictures on screen, if you recognize those and you read those, let me know what you think. And if you want to pick them up, you can pick them up on Comixology, this individual issues by themselves, or you can pick them up in Spider-Man The Next Chapter, Volume 2, and then the Sandman versus Venom issue, that's in Volume 3, along with, uh, along with the death of Anne Wang, which we will talk about in the next issue, or next episode. But before we get there, we're probably going to do our countdown to CinemaCon episode first, then we'll do the death of Anne Wang, and then we'll have some other things coming up. We know Eddie Brock's in the movie, we know Anne Wang's in the movie, we know Riz Ahmed plays uh, Carlton Drake, and we know the Life Foundation's in the movie. So I'm probably, during the countdown to CinemaCon, going to make a video on those four uh, characters and entity um, in the universe, since we know those are, uh, for a fact, going to be them. We're pretty sure Scott Hayes plays Roland Trees. We got good information on that. But until they announce it, maybe at CinemaCon, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. I want to wait and see before we make any videos on those characters. So for now, for the countdown, we're going to push back Ultimate Comics Week for like till two weeks from now, and we'll deal with Ultimate Comics later. But for now, I want to count down movie stuff, talk about more movie things, and uh, get ready for CinemaCon. Because even though we don't know for sure yet, uh, I, you know, pretty sure I, you guys, you guys helped me dig for information on this, like a, like over a month ago, where we were like, oh man, you know, Venom's probably not going to be at WonderCon. They didn't show anything Sony related. And then one of you said, well, what about CinemaCon? And then Venom Gaming looked that up and said, hey, there is a panel for CinemaCon. So because we dug and we worked together, thank you guys for that. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we're going to get something at CinemaCon one way or another but what that will be we will speculate in the very next episode of this show and then the episode after that we'll do the death of Anne Wang and then we'll get into the characters that we know are going to be in the movie after that counting down to CinemaCon which will be April 23rd with hopefully a new trailer and hopefully some other cool stuff so thank you guys for hanging with me while my computer went down and while I got the new computer set up hopefully you like this episode like share subscribe all that fun stuff let me know what you think in the comments below and as always I'll see you in the future peace